Do you have a SIG P320? You need to watch this. A lawsuit has come out against SIG, and as an owner of these pistols, it has me concerned as well. Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, your premier source for Second Amendment news. Uh, this, look, I, before I even say it, anytime I mention anything negative about Sig Sauer, I get just the, you know, the, the, the fanboys or people who think they can do nothing wrong. All right, before I say anything, I own two of them, uh, which is why I'm bringing this information to you, because even though I have two, uh, this one, as you can tell if you're not aware of, of Sig, uh, if you look at the trigger, this is the original trigger. This has not gone back for the voluntary upgrade program, all right? And they're unloaded for reasons now. Um, and this is the brand new, this is the military uh, pistol. This is the M17. And if you look at it, it has a different trigger, you can see. This is the uh, the lighter trigger that, that they upgraded to and went away from that heavier mass. Remember a couple of years ago, the whole, the gun would go off on its own uh, issue, okay? Uh, there has been a lawsuit filed, and this lawsuit has a lot of information in it that as an owner of even the upgraded system, like this is the one that troops are carrying right now, uh, it has me concerned. Uh, enough concern uh, is is in my, my mind right now to uh, maybe not carry these. And I was, literally, was ju I just purchased enough stuff to make a nice rig uh, so I can go do some training and stuff with this one. Uh, let me get into this. I'm going to read you from the lawsuit some stuff, and then I'll get into some of the statistics or, or some of the incidents where uh, this, even the upgraded version, is still going off and causing catastrophic injuries to people. Now, not every one of them has been, been had an issue. I'll say that right off. I know there's going to be somebody like, I've put 6,000 rounds through mine. I've never had a problem. Well, I have several thousand rounds through this bad boy right here, uh, and only a, a couple boxes through this one. None of them have gone off on their own. However, uh, I don't know if I trust them, and I just want you to, to understand what's going on. This is actually pretty serious news uh, for SIG. So let's get into this. A lawsuit was just recently filed in the uh, New Hampshire U.S. District Court. Uh, a, a New Hampshire resident whose name is Kyle Gway uh, is suing SIG Sauer. And I'm going to read you uh, from the... So I don't want to screw it up, because uh, when it comes down to lawsuits, you don't want to, you know... I mean, it's bad enough they're getting sued, so... So this action seeks actual compensatory and punitive damages and equitable relief relating to Defendant Sig Sauer Inc.'s negligence, defective design, breach of warranties, and unfair and deceptive marketing practices regarding a semi-automatic gun, specifically a striker-fired semi-automatic pistol known as the P320 that has fired without trigger pulls on numerous civilians and law enforcement agents across the nation for the last four years at least. So we'll go into the uh, incident background that led to where we are today. Uh, and it says, on the night of January 28th of 2020, this year, Gway was carrying his P SIG P320 in a SIG manufactured outside the waistband P250 holster while walking his dogs. And for those who aren't aware, the 320 was the first striker file fired pistol that SIG made and they made it on the frame of the 250. So the 320 fits all the 250 holsters unless you have like optics cuts and stuff like that. So the the uh, lawsuit continues. It says upon returning home, Gwei began to remove the holster from his belt with the firearm still fully seated in the SIG holster. I'm sure we all understand, all right? It's just probably a belt uh, outside the waistband holster sliding it off his belt. As soon as he took a hold of the holster and moved it so that the barrel would be facing backwards, when he removed it from his waistband, the P320 fired and hit him in his right thigh without the trigger being pulled. The hollow point bullet that it discharged left a gaping wound in his thigh and pieces of the holster across the floor where he lay. Hillsborough, this took place in Hillsborough, New Hampshire. Hillsborough police responded and noted, among other things, historical problems with the trigger assembly of the P320, finding that the firearm went off inside the holster, as stated by Plaintiff Gway. The Hillsborough police further noted that there is no reason or evidence to suggest 
that Gwei negligently or purposely discharged the firearm into his own leg. Then they go into his, his injury, which is pretty significant. And this is where things start to get interesting, is where they go into the actual history of the firearm and some of the known issues that have popped up, uh, including what might have or might not have been done as SIG was pushing and competing for the, uh, the contract for this. Uh, you might remember they won the uh, U.S. Army's uh, sidearm uh, competition uh, to the tune of a $580 million contract. Uh, so that may or may not be a part of it, but it's definitely part of this lawsuit. So it says here, years before this incident occurred in January of 2020, through and including the date of Gwei's December 2016 purchase, SIG expressly warranted that the weapon could not fire without a trigger pull. And this is the picture they submitted in their lawsuit. And if you're like me and you bought one of these guns right around the time they came out, uh, you'll remember seeing this. And you can see right here in the second sentence, it says from the trigger to the striker and even the magazine, the 320 won't fire unless you want it to. In additional marketing material, it continues, under the heading striker safety, SIG further states, the striker safety prevents the striker from being released unless the trigger is pulled. At the same time, SIG contradictorily warned in the original, in the original owner's manual, for the P320 on page 25 that the weapon could fire if dropped without the trigger being pulled. Specifically that it could fire uh, if a round were chambered, i.e. inside the firing chamber of the weapon slide when incurring an impact from the ground. And then they put this picture in here, which was, yes, from the original uh, owner's manual. And says, despite this warning, SIG expressly warranted not just that the 320 could not fire without a trigger pull, but that it could not fire if dropped in marketing documents regarding the 320. The company was therefore stating two opposite things about the safety features of the 320 or lack thereof at the same time. And they're referring to this, it says uh, safety without compromise, the 320 maximizes peace of mind with a robust safety system. Never again will you need to pull the trigger to disassemble. And then it mentions that you don't need a tabbed trigger safety on your gun to be drop safe. And okay, I'm not going to read this entire thing. I'm just going to hit some, a couple more highlights and then some of the, the actual instances where this has gone off after they did the upgrade, which is what has actually got me cautious, uh, cautiously thinking about what's, you know, do I trust this gun anymore? Then goes into how SIG, you know, markets it to law enforcement and uh, the military as well as civilians. And that was one of the reasons that Gwei decided to purchase one of these. And he says that the advertising and continued claims of safety led Gwei to purchase the 320 without knowledge of its dangers. Uh, at all times relevant to this complaint, SIG had a duty to disclose that the 320 suffered from any dangerous safety defect. Instead of disclosing its safety defects in numerous marketing materials or on the packaging of the 320, SIG decided to conceal them from purchasers such as Gwei, causing him to purchase the 320 when he otherwise would not have. Okay, so now we're, this is a lawsuit, so you understand what's going on. And it goes into the 320s voluntary program, uh, the voluntary upgrade program that started in August of 17 after uh, a couple police departments realized that if it was dropped at the time, if it was dropped like on a 45 degree angle, it would go off. Um, so they did that 320 uh, voluntary upgrade program and they claimed that it had to do with the mass of the trigger. And that's what led to the upgraded trigger was the uh, reduced weight so that if it did fall, it wouldn't have that much weight falling to the rear. Uh, I am not a firearms engineer. I just go off of what they told me when I called uh, when I was supposed to send this one in, but I never did. Um, so it goes into saying that the 320 is the first striker fired, fired pistol that SIG has ever made and how it was built off the 250 uh, frame. And the 250 is a hammer fire pistol, uh, so it's a different operating system for those who aren't familiar. It then goes into uh, talking about the very small surface areas that meet between the striker which is what holds the firing pin under pressure on a striker fired pistol and the sear, which is supposed to stop it from going forward. And in some instances they found that it was like really, really uh, minute, that uh, surface area. So then they uh, go into talking about in early 16, while SIG was competing for the $580 million contract to supply the United States Army with a new service pistol, SIG's prototype 320s exhibited 200 malfunctions or more during the Army's testing. And I went over some of this stuff back then, and I'll put the videos here. <laughs> I took a lot of flack because everybody was saying, oh, you're a Glock fanboy. I was just telling you what the results were. Believe me, I'm not, I'm not pooping on these guns, man. I, I have in invested money in them. Uh, I, I do like them, but there's an issue. Uh, so let's, let's go a little more 
into the facts that came out in this lawsuit. During the Army trials, it said that the defects that they experienced were failure to eject spent casings, firing upon impact with the ground, and not firing at all. Uh, in or around April of 2016, the Department of Defense notified SIG of many malfunctions with the 320 and demanded that SIG fix all of the design problems associated with the firearm. Early 16, SIG also was warned by a Florida Police Department and others that the 320 was capable of firing without a trigger pull. SIG decided not to tell the public about the 2016 DOD and other law enforcement agency warnings about defects with the 320. And in their defense, they were probably looking into it because you just don't, like, if one gun's an issue, right? You don't say every, the whole, uh, you know, every gun made of that model is terrible. You obviously have to look into it, um, which they were doing. It continues saying, as early as 2016, if not years before, members of SIG's management and design teams began investigating defective discharge events. These investigations involve SIG employees visiting local law enforcement agencies reporting defective discharge events and taking the weapons to New Hampshire for in-house testing. They then said that these in-house tests uh, consisted of firing rounds with a weapon at issue and then declaring it to be fine because it would fire. Uh, in each case the in-house testing destroyed the integrity of the weapon in its immediate post-accident condition. The lawsuit then alleges that instead of uh, taking care of that issue at the moment, you know, at the time, uh, SIG's upper level management actively avoided learning the details of defective discharge events. Instead, it worked where possible with law enforcement departments to theorize implausible reasons of why the 320s were discharging, saying that they were making them go off because keys, artifacts, or seat belt buckles or other articles of clothing, etc., were getting into holsters and pulling the triggers. Now, those of you who use a duty holster, it's pretty hard for articles of clothing or seatbelt buckles to get into a holster, wrap itself around the trigger, and pull, but that's what this is saying. And then uh, it says here in one email exchange, for example, between SIG in-house lawyer and a Ross Common Michigan law enforcement agent in 2016, the SIG lawyer recounts a patrol officer stating on a body cam video after a defective discharge inside of a patrol car, quote, tell me how a gun would fire still in the holster. And if you want to read that there is that, uh, that issue is deep documented in the lawsuit, and I'll, I'll have a link down below for you to read it. That, this incident was on camera, body cam, so they were able to prove that the guy, the, the officer was just standing up to get out of his car and the, the gun fired. Uh, and there were other scenarios uh, of the gun going off on its own, which is why I'm bringing this to you. Because if you have one of these, I want you to be aware of some actual incidents where people got shot because the gun went off on its own. And of course, obviously, the lawsuit is saying that SIG didn't want to tell anybody about this because they would have lost that $580 million contract with the government. Um, another incident, August 4th, 2017, a Stanford, Connecticut SWAT officer sued SIG in the U.S. District Court. Uh, for the District of Connecticut uh, for damages relating to a drop fire that shot him in the knee when his holstered P320 fell from a distance of less than three feet and fired. And you probably remember that lawsuit because that kicked off the storm that eventually led uh, to people sending their gun in to, for that voluntary upgrade program. Four days later, SIG issued a press release stating the 320 could fire without a trigger pull under certain conditions, including a vibration but reaffirm the safety of the 320 to all end users. Uh, and this is their uh, their uh, trip press release right here, as you can see. It then goes into the uh, voluntary upgrade program. It says it was intended to redesign and correct the defective firing control unit with uh, within several hundred thousands of the P320s without admitting it. It then alleges to protect the corporate image. SIG continued to deny both to law enforcement and the general public any dangers in the original non-upgraded 320. Uh, as the one that shot Gwei in January of 2020. So he had an original one just like this. I didn't send mine in because Sig did say at the time, and I remember this is why I didn't send it, uh, that the gun would not fire if its safeties were fully functional and were without broken or missing parts. And this gun has never been dropped, <laughs> especially after all the all the stuff happened. Uh, it's never been dropped, um, but I still don't know if I trust it, to be honest with you. Now the lawsuit says that uh, the voluntary upgrade program uh, was a way to avoid a recall and most customers uh, did not send them back. About 20% of 320 owners mailed their guns back for this voluntary upgrade, thus saving SIG 
tens of millions of dollars in labor, parts, and shipping, and leaving hundreds of thousands of dangerous 320s still in circulation in the U.S. And they say at the time the, uh, the voluntary upgrade program was initiated in August of 17, SIG already knew about these numerous de defects with the fire and control unit for approximately two years, if not longer. On May 10th of 2017, the DOD submitted an urgent engineering change proposal uh, for the prototype of the military version of the 320. At that time, the DOD said that uh, this recommendation was an improvement to enhance uh, performance but their proposal demanded that the 320's internal firing control unit be replaced, including the receiver subassembly, the sear group subassembly, the trigger, the sear, the striker subassembly, and the firing pin striker. So that is basically the guts that make it go boom. And SID complied, uh, as obviously if they didn't, they wouldn't have won the contract. But this lawsuit alleges that in order to save approximately 50 to 100 million dollars in recall expenses, it assured end users of the approximately half a million commercial versions of the 320 that were in hands of U.S. law enforcement agents and civilians, including Guay and me, <laughs> that they were still safe, thereby exposing uh, him and others to bodily harm, emotional trauma, and sudden death. And to this date, there has not been a recall on the 320. Now again, I am just reading the lawsuit. I am not alleging that I've had any problem with mine, but we have heard of the incidents that are out there. And when I started reading the, what I'm about to tell you, some of the other incidents where people were shot with their gun or it went off on its own while it was holstered, it's concerning. Uh, for example, in February of 2016, a fully holstered P320 discharged without a trigger pull inside of Roscommon, Michigan, police officer's vehicle when the officer moved to exit the vehicle during a snowstorm. That's the one that was on the body cam that I talked to you about. Uh, in 2016... The Surprise Arizona Police Department complained to SIG of two separate incidents of the 320 firing without trigger pulls. Despite outstanding discovery requests in the civil action against SIG regarding the defects of the P320 in the U.S. District Court of East District, uh, in the East District of Virginia in 2018, and that lawsuit was Vadney versus SIG Sauer, uh, these three incidents, the ones that I just told you about, the two in Arizona and the one in Michigan, they were not disclosed by SIG until the last day of discovery. In October 2016, a P320 fired uncommanded on retired NYPD officer Thomas Frankenberry in South Carolina, severely injuring him. The spent casing did not eject. In November of 2016, a, a P320 fired uncommanded on an officer in Holmes Beach, Florida, striking him in the leg. In 2017, a sheriff's deputy in Michigan accidentally discharged a Sig Sauer pistol, striking a school teacher in the neck. Uh, in January, on January 5th of 2017, a P320 shot a Stanford SWAT team member in his knee when the pistol fell from a distance of less than three feet to the ground while fully holstered, refuting Sig's express representations of that weapon is being drop safe and that it can't fi uh, cannot be fired without a trigger pull uh, and does not require a safety to be drop safe. On February 28, 2017, a 320 accidentally discharged while in use by the University of Cincinnati Police Department. Uh, June 14, 2017, a 320 accidentally discharged in Wilsonville, Oregon. On June 20, 2017, a 320 accidentally discharged while in use by the Howell Township, New Jersey Police Department. In June of 17, SIG shipped approximately 800 P320s to the Loudoun County Sheriff's Department in Virginia, privately assuring Sheriff Dave Chapman that the by then known problems with the weapon would be fixed, but stating that for the time being it had to deal with the weapon as currently manufactured and designed. If I was the sheriff, I wouldn't know. Whatever. Three, three of those P320s in that shipment later fired without trigger pulls on three deputy sheriffs, severely injuring them. On July 28th of 2017, a 320 accidentally discharged in Tarrant County, Texas. On August 7th, 2017, SIG CEO Ron Cohen stated in a press release that there have been zero reported drop-related 320 incidents in the U U.S. commercial market. This statement was not true according to the lawsuit. Uh, in fact, at the time it was issued, SIG had direct knowledge that Officer Vincent Sherparis in Connecticut had been shot by a drop fire with a commercial version of the 320 approximately eight months earlier, as well as several other defective discharges of the 320 before that date. And it, it continues, guys. This is why I'm, this is why I'm concerned. Like, I, I won't, I, I don't know. I might not wear these. I, I might not. Or if I do, I might not load them until I get to the range. I don't know if, I'm, this is definitely not going to be an EDC gun for me now. 
On August 9, 2017, the police chief of Morrow, Georgia, issued an emergency order removing the 320s from service. In October of 2017, a 320 accidentally discharged in Georgia when an officer fell to the ground in pursuit of a suspect. His weapon was holstered and fired simply when he struck the ground. On November 12, 2017, a 320 accidentally discharged in Tyler, Texas. In January 2018, a 320 accidentally discharged in Dallas County, Texas. February 7, 2018, Loudoun County, Virginia Deputy Sheriff Marcy Vadney, that's the lawsuit we just uh, mentioned, her 320 fired on her uncommanded, meaning she didn't pull the trigger, severing her right femur, causing catastrophic skeletal injury, deformity, four general anesthesia surgeries, severe emotional distress, and, okay, and, and that goes into her injury. Uh, months later, April of 2018, SIG issued a second voluntary upgrade notice to all users and owners of P320s, but did not recall the weapon. Uh, May of 2018, civilian Gunther Walker reported to SIG that his 320 fired on him uncommanded, no trigger pull, when he placed the weapon down on his nightstand, shooting him through the palm of his left hand. Uh, in June of 2018, Williams County, Ohio officer reported that the 320, his 320 discharged twice, in one moment, as he was merely attempting to move the slide backwards, one round grazed the officer's arm, one blew a hole through the driver's door of the, of the cruiser. In May of 2018, a Rancho Cucamonga, California officer reported that his upgraded version of the 320 fired uncommanded while he was merely walking inside his department's locker room. The casing did not eject. October 2018, a 320 fired uncommanded on Lieutenant Latrell Hayes in Georgia while he was holstering it, causing severe tunneling injuries in his right thigh and calf. In October of 2018, firearms expert and retired law enforcement officer Stephen Mays, his 320 fired upon him uncommanded while seated in its holster, causing severe injury to his right leg. It just keeps going. In December 2018, civilian Robert Lang's 320 fired on him uncommanded, causing severe tunneling wounds to his right leg. On May 19, 2019, an upgraded 320 of Lieutenant Thomas Ahern uh, of Cambridge, Massachusetts, SWAT, fired uncommanded inside a SWAT van with six other occupants while he was working a shift. Uh, the round struck the metal plate affixed to his cell phone case, deflected into the SWAT gear bag, and came to a rest in a ballistic helmet, narrowly missing everyone. The casing of the round did not eject. On July 23, 2019, an upgraded 320 fired uncommanded on Walter, Officer Walter Collette Jr. in Somerville, Massachusetts, hitting him in the leg, causing substantial injuries. Uh, the next day, an upgraded 320 fired uncommanded on a Homeland Security agent at a firing range in the Bronx, New York. <sighs> August 20 of 19, Philadelphia Transit officers upgraded 320 fired uncommanded while fully holstered, nearly striking a bystander in the hub in the subway. It was all captured on video, and it shows the upgraded 320 firing the gun without ever being touched while still seated in the holster. It keeps, it literally it keeps going. There's about 10, 15 more, uh, and they're still happening. This is what, this is why I'm bringing it to you. They're still happening. They're, they're telling people that some, in June of 2020, this last month, June of 2020, a SIG P320 fired uncommanded on a Pasco County, Florida officer, severely wounding him in the right leg. It was the third uncommanded discharge experienced by Pasco officers since 2019. Uh, in June of 2020, a 320 fired uncommanded on a civilian in Missouri while fully seated in its holster, causing substantial damage to the holster and resulted in a broken bone in the civilian's foot. Uh, this just keeps happening. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you have the unupgraded, the non-upgraded version, or the upgraded version, uh, they're an issue. So please, if if you take anything out of this, please don't EDC these guns. Uh, until SIG addresses this uh, and says maybe these serial numbers are, are an issue or if it has this color something inside of it, please use caution. I am not bashing SIG. I love their products. I have several SIGs. But this gun, there's an issue, obviously. It's well documented in this lawsuit. Uh, and uh, I just don't, I can't put my, my life behind this gun. I can't carry this as an EDC gun to keep me safe if I hit a bump in the road and it's going to fire and, and hit me. Or uh, if I stand up out of my car and it's going to fire. Or if I take it off while it's in the holster, it's going to fire. I can't do it, and I hope that this information gets to you and you can make that decision before you go out and you're the next person, unfortunately, that makes this list. So pass this along to your friends, please. This lawsuit was just filed 
July 2nd, 2020. Um, so we will definitely be keeping our eye on this. I'm sure the nation is going to start hearing of this. Uh, you, if you have a 320, please take this information seriously. I do not want any of my viewers hurt because they are carrying a SIG P320 because it's obviously not safe. There's an issue. If one gun's an issue, maybe it's that gun. Or maybe it's somebody who actually pulled the trigger and didn't say it. You know how the negligent discharges happen. But for them to be on video firing while they're in the holster, guys and gals, don't carry this gun. Hopefully they can fix it because it it's a great gun. I, I, it's a great firearm but I don't want it to kill me while I'm wearing it. Ladies and gentlemen, please pass this along. This is kind of big news, all right? This is this is bad news. It's concerning news, and everyone needs to hear it, so please share it. Until we see each other again, I will have my eyes peeled to this one. Uh, yeah, just please be careful. Be safe, stay vigilant, carry a weapon. Just don't carry the 320 right now. Take care, everybody.